You ready? Mm -hmm. It's going? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry guys, that got cut off somehow. Maybe maybe we'll figure out a way to get these together, maybe not. Anybody that's that's that interested in, in doing this and anything I might be saying, maybe, maybe you won't mind watching uh, 10 videos before this is all said and done. But uh, yeah, I was going, yeah, talking about the dry scrapers. To my knowledge, uh, all of the uh, teepee hides from the period we're talking about, the hair off hides, were dry scraped. Uh, I'm not arguing against wet scraping. I would honestly, I'd love to know, lo, know a lot more about how this was done in the, in the real early days, like the pre-contact kind of days when they didn't have metal tools. Um, I could conceivably see a buffalo hide being wet scraped uh, because I've tried to dry scrape one with flint and things like that. And it's possible, but I mean, it seriously takes like a week to do a hide. So it doesn't seem all that practical. I know there's a there's a, that's way above my pay grade. I know there's a million things I'm missing if you were to do it that way. Uh, so that that's a whole nother field that I really don't know anything about, but am interested in. For our purposes, what we're gonna be doing is dry scraping with a sharp tool, uh, the hair off of this hide and the same thing to thin it. And I just wanna go over real quick the I guess kind of the do's and don'ts of, of using a dry scraper, coming up with a dry scraper, and in particular blades. Uh, a lot of people, this is going to be, you know, you're going to have known about this from day one. But if you haven't, hopefully there's something I do that maybe will kind of steer somebody uh, in a little bit better direction than they're going. Because I actually, for whatever reason, struggled with this a lot when I got started on Buffalo. Um, I can't even find my, you guys that know me, this won't surprise y'all, but I can't even find my actual Elkhorn scraper. I don't use it that much anymore just because it's kind of the nostalgia of using one kind of wore off 20, 30, 40, 50 hides ago. I just now I'm just interested in getting the hair scraped off literally using the Elkhorn scraper or making an Elkhorn scraper is great I mean there's not a better material out there they last forever uh, they're easy to make if you can come up with a good antler but I don't have mine to actually show you so I do have an elk antler though a raw elk antler um, so if you're gonna make Elkhorn scraper it, it comes out of this portion right here sometimes they're bigger sometimes they're smaller uh, you know and everything in between I've been using these for years, uh, like this exact one, I don't know how many hides I've had through it. It's another one of those, other than putting a new blade on it every now and then, it's, it's another one of those zero maintenance things. It's, it looks terrible, I know, it's just a, it's a 3 16ths by uh, one inch, I guess that, that is, piece of mild steel that's been over at that angle. And I took a couple of pieces of wood and sanded them down, put one on either side of the handle and just duct, duct taped the thing together. It's, the reason I like them, I've got about a half a dozen of these with different width blades uh, several of them have the same width and i just sharpen them all and use them all and sharpen them all use them all that sort of thing but i also like different width blades for different areas of the hide but to replace a blade literally all you do is you just cut the tape and take the blade off throw it in the trash put a new one on tape it in place it's ready to go it's not affected by moisture or salt or, or anything like that so I, I know it looks terrible but it works great so if you're not going to do one out of hell antler uh, anything like this works great as far as the blades go uh in the old days like if you're going to do an elkhorn scraper I, I know some guys that that do a lot of this uh, metal if i'm me looking for metal artifacts you know metal detecting a lot of historic period planes in campsites and they find just they find the most amazing stuff one thing they find a lot of i mean just like a disproportionate amount of compared to other things is scraper blades uh, they're made out of all different things. One of the main things they make them out of uh, is just knife blades, you know, just, just a plain old, like a five pin Wilson trade knife, which, you know, this is not necessarily, this is a trade knife, but it is a, a five pin Wilson knife that they would just take pieces of these knives and snap them into, you know, like three inch segments and sharpen the things. They're super thin, you know, they hold a great edge. Uh, something else that you see occasionally is files. Files are, uh, for whatever reason, a lot of the uh, hide scrapers and museum collections that have, you know, kind of made it to, the, to today intact, a lot of them have file blades. Files make great blades. I uh, used to use a lot of file blades. I don't personally care for them anymore because it took me forever to realize that a thick blade, if you have to use a thick blade, use a thick blade. But if you can use a thinner blade, all you're doing with the thick blade is fighting yourself because every time you have to sharpen the thing, which is often, you're having to fight through all of this metal, all of this bulk. All you're wanting is just that razor thin edge. It doesn't need to be any thicker 
than to keep it from hopping while you're uh, scraping the thing. So if it's got enough resistance in it through thickness to keep from doing that, that's all you need. My very favorite thing to use, uh, not that I've used a lot of things, it's just I had a lot of these laying around when I started making my own blades. I've made probably a hundred blades and I'm still working out of the same stack. I use, let me see the phone real quick, please. I use just wore out, and you can use a new one if you want to, but you don't have to. I used uh, circular saw blades. Uh, and you know, you can tell this isn't an exact science. I just take a right angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and uh, take one of these blades and score it, score the surface of the blade with the grinder and then just snap them in two. Uh, and you know, cut them to whatever size. I don't do any measurements or draw any lines or anything. I just, you know, I just know my preferred blade size and that's what size they end up. But you can tell they're, they're super thin and they hold the edge really, really good. So this, it, that I just made that this morning because I need some new blades anyway, and for you know, kind of purposes of showing y'all what's going on. But this is the this is the same thing. It's just this has had about half a dozen hides through it. These these are the best blades that I've been able to come up with. I uh, did I do that right? I guess. I hope you guys saw that. Uh, I don't know if I had my phone facing the way, the right way. Anyway, I've used the uh, the store bought blades. Uh, I've, I've got a few from several different places. I used to get those. I think everybody knows about them. The dry scrapers are, are great. The big, huge dry scraper that that a number of places sell. Uh, I think the very first one I got was back in the Braintan.com days. But I, you know, a number of places that that sell. Uh, brain tanning supplies have them, but they have a really thick, like quarter inch thick, really heavy blade. It's a great blade until it gets dull, which, you know, happens after a couple minutes. And once you lose the angle on that edge, it's just, it's really a beast to sharpen because you've got to fight all that metal away. With these, you don't. I mean, that's, that's all you've got. So again, all you're interested in is just that razor edge. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna walk over and look at a few things. I've got hides uh there again a few hides i said it again <laughs> that's, that only one two. that's not that bad that's not that bad getting better um i've got a few hides stood up like we did the other day so we can talk about you know kind of the particulars this isn't hopefully isn't going to take very long to go through this dry scraping is dry scraping it's just you do it uh, and you do it until you get good at it and you stick with it you know it's there's really not i don't really have anything uh you know, mind blowing to, to let you guys in on about dry scraping that you probably don't already know or wouldn't after 10 minutes of doing it. Um, I did really want to harp on the dry scraper because people talk to me about scraping hides. That's the, these, that's the biggest question I get is about how do you, kind of blades you use, how do you keep them sharp, that sort of thing. I'll be able to show y'all that and uh, just, just the use of it so it, you know, it's, I'm, I'm kind of putting my money where my mouth is and it, it works good um, and then we'll just kind of hit on a couple of other things then I've got another hide it's actually the hide that we looked at the other day that I had already scraped I've got a, that one ready to be brained uh, for its final braining it's dry in a frame it's had a tiny little bit of work done to it that I'll talk to you all about for just a couple minutes uh, then we're gonna brain it with the exact mixture the exact process application process we did the other day one of those things that I did want to mention that I picked up in the video the other day on the, the braining, that I wasn't, it's, I wasn't trying to mislead anybody. It was just one of those things that, uh, you know, the idea thing where other ideas hopped in my head and seemed more important before I finished the previous thought. Um, talking about neat's foot oil. Neat's foot oil is something that it, I, I've heard about, or I did hear about a lot before I started using it. Um, and it's one of those things that if you're wanting to do this, you don't render the fat, you're not familiar with, you know, liver and, and other things like that, but you're wanting something besides brains, I wouldn't try to dissuade anybody from using Neat's foot oil. Uh, cooking oil, I don't have any experience with cooking oil, but I've heard it's essentially the same thing. It's The great thing about it is it's like that stuff I was telling you that I really like to use, uh, the bone marrow grease neat, Neat's foot oil thing that I used to make, is, is the viscosity. Uh, when it's really cold, you can you can uh, brain a hide when it's cold, and it still does that same effect where it just sucks in. Unless I can get that effect, I don't like using fat. I don't know the numbers, uh, but in the past, I've tanned quite a few with Neat's Foot Oil. They came out exactly. Uh, everything about them, 
as far as the the braining process and the mixture is concerned came out just as good as the fat and brains um, or the neat's foot oil bone marrow thing in brains actually in my opinion they come out a little better than the fat and brains uh, the fat and brains for me i have to work them a little bit harder a little bit different but it you know it does work uh, and it's definitely an old school thing to do but if you're not going to do that you're wanting to do this you know you're wanting to do this process i wouldn't worry about using needs for all uh, just just don't use too much of it it's easy to get you know you can it's just a leather conditioner uh, you know people use it on their shoes and everything else you can get it at the grocery store sometimes you can definitely get it at like a uh, i guess any any sort of horse supply store leather supply store that sort of thing and it's, it's pretty idiot proof. So you know, I didn't want to make it sound the other day that I was trying to, you know, make everybody stay away from needs for all because I've used it a lot myself. Okay, let's walk around and look at a couple things. And um, and then I guess I'll kind of pause at the end of this and see if there's anything I forgot. And we'll, we'll call it good for, for this video. And I, another thing real quick, I don't, as far as scraping, uh, sharpening a scraper, I don't bother with the you know the honing and the stones and all that just use a file uh, you know you'll you'll wear out a blade quicker but this blade is completely ready to go uh, all I need to do is tape it on the handle and and hit it with my file it's completely ready to go and it's got probably 10 minutes worth of time in it you know so it's not a it's, it's not a big deal to, to make up blades just got to play around with it a little bit Seems like a lot of people really talk about spending a lot of time sharpening or trying to get a blade sharp. Uh, yeah, I, I have no doubt that a lot of folks can get one of these sharper than I can. But, I mean, you, this will shave hair off your arm. It'll shave that hide just fine. And after about two strokes of this with a much sharper blade down this hide, it's already dull to that point anyway. So it's, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. One thing I wanted to mention about the stuff that uh, I just flat said a few videos ago that was wrong. I, I don't know what I was thinking. When I was talking about that, it doesn't matter at all for the teepee hides, but it, it matters to me because I misspoke. Um, when I was talking about the heads on the hides that I'm getting, uh, how we trimmed the face off, for some reason, I said that the back set of holes was the horn holes. And I, I don't know what I was thinking. It's not, it's the ears. And this actually, this is the hide, the quote unquote perfect hide we had laid out on the floor. Uh, this flesh side, of course. But this this is the ears. It, they're still intact. The horns were, you know, there again, I don't know what I was thinking. That's number four. Mm -hmm. uh, the horns were, were slightly in and forward of the ears, of, of course. This is where the eyes were. This is where the horns were. and. You know, uh, the smaller robe that my dog was laying on the other day, this is exactly how the head on that one was skinned. They seem to have skinned them a number of ways. Uh, I've heard it's bulls versus cows, different tribes. I That's above my pay grade. I, I don't know any of that. I do know that this is super common, and I know how to do it. It's just a cut around the base of the horn and then a cut from the horn to the eye, leaving the eyelid intact and all that. But when you sew it up, there's a little bit of slack and you have to take these, take a knife and cut out these two small crescent pieces. But the seams naturally come out. I don't know if you can see it. Those ears are probably getting in the way. But the seams naturally come out in these two crescent shapes. Sometimes it's actually cut into a horseshoe shape, you know, where the whole forehead is, is kind of sort of scalped loose and left in place at the back. But, uh, you know, you, you, I think you can see what's going on. It's just like we sew up the front leg seams with the, the, the yellow line. It'll come out later on and uh, you know be replaced with sinew that just for reference purposes that's the nose these are literally the two nostrils uh, this is the bottom split bottom lip you know this is the long weird that wasn't planning on talking about this and won't go into it deeply but this is the long hair along the throat I was talking about that you uh, just a real narrow strips like an inch wide it's the one if you get off to a little one side or the other uh, you'll have you know all the long hair on one side versus the other or just you know bits and pieces okay this is uh trying to make sure I'm going in the right order here with these hides just a couple things real quick this isn't our hide that we fleshed the other day it's still not dry uh, the vast majority of it is but this this strip there's nothing good. The, the fiber structure of the hide, the fleshing, the scraping, the working, there's not, nothing good about this mane. Um, there's a, if you've got a hide that you can say shave the hair off of or, or 
a hide with really, really short hair or slip the hair off of it. There is literally, I call it in bicycle inner tube. There's literally a strip of the all, well, all of the dermis. Everything the hair grows out of underneath the mane is unique to the to the grain on the rest of this hide. I mean, it's it's literally almost like it's it's painted on there or drawn on there. It's in a real specific spot right down the main. It takes forever to dry. It takes forever to scrape. All this other good stuff. Uh, and something I want to mention is Billy. You know, the other half of our little tanning competition, we do lots of things drastically different. But this is something he he turned me on to that I don't do it uh, often. Uh, but I've, I've done it enough to figure it out and see the the huge advantages to it. He calls it main scalping, I think. Um, I don't know how he does it. The way I do it is I just get in there with a really sharp knife and, and do basically, you know, it's with a knife, but it's essentially what we were doing in the hump pocket the other day. I, I, all I'm doing is addressing that strip, that bicycle inner tube strip. And you can literally, if you're real careful, because uh, the hide's very thin to either side of it, you don't want to get off into that but you can skive into that, that strange layer uh, and, and work it back for, you can usually go about two feet, about an inch wide, and it removes that piece to where this will dry down with the rest of the hide. Our hide that we had the other day that we fleshed, it's, uh, it's now three days later. The majority of the hide is dry. There's probably some, still some damp spots in the belly, but there's, there's quite, a bit of, quite a bit of moisture in the mane. I generally don't worry about it this time of year because the weather down here is still cool enough. Uh, I just I just let the hide dry as it wants to and, and go to work for the week and, and scrape it the, the, a week later on the weekend or something. It's, it's not an issue. But in the summer down here, when it's getting to 100 degrees every day and we have high humidity, sometimes this main will actually rot or at least start to rot uh, before it's even dry. So if you do get a hide that you want to sort of speed the drying on or if heat is an issue you can scalp that mane like Billy's talking about and it, it, it works really good just got to make sure there again the hide's super thin to either side you, you want to stay out of that this will actually be one of the first areas you can see in the other the other day when we uh, were braining the hide that from the flesh side you could tell this area was it's the heaviest haired area of the hide other than the, the specific mane itself but you could tell this was already drying out so you know it, this isn't an issue this the, the thickness of the hair is not what slows the thing down drying. It's the, it's the hide, the actual hide itself. Um, let's see, a couple other things. Oh yeah, uh, dirty. These things get filthy. Uh, I, doing them outside, they're almost invari 